Hey, 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 we are back with an all new video. Today, we can finally go over what I've been wanting to go over for a little while, which is, of course, if you've read the description, you've read the video title, whatever, you know we are going over Linux Mint. Now, today we'll be following Linux Mint Ubuntu Cinnamon, okay? Just to let you know what's going on exactly. So, if you're following under hardware, then you will definitely need to make sure that you're using a burning software, such as, for example, Belina Etcher. That's what I recommend because it is, if I'm not wrong, it is open source, but it's also cross-platform. So you've got that. Yeah. So all you gotta do is just grab the file, link will be in the, in the description. Make sure you have a USB plugged in, use that as the target, flash the file, and then flash it, and then you can boot into it. So here will be the instructions for building up from scratch. So, we're going to build a, build a new virtual machine. We're going to name it Mint, and it automatically registers as Linux version Ubuntu 64-bit. Now there's also the ability to do the Debian version, but we will not be doing that today. We will do that later on. And our allocated fixed memory, we will allocate to to 6,128 megabytes, which is six gigabytes. In fact, no, we can do that because the grub will not be using up anything too much higher than 128 um, megabytes. I don't really know of any bootloader that's actually any more bloated than 128 megabytes, so yeah, I wouldn't imagine that we'd need anything more than this, so we can go right ahead and just use this. Create a virtual hard disk now, VDI, virtual box disk image, and we will fix the size for this installation. You don't really need for a virtual machine just for testing, you most likely won't need anything past 10 gigs, but we'll go ahead and um, give it 38 gigabytes, because why not? That's our little standard zone settings. Of course, since I have an AMD processor, it has acceleration of VTX AMD V nesting paging, and of course it's a Linux, so it has a KVM. So, everything is good here. System, we want to have our hard drive as the first networking enabled you want to give this i'll give it two cores why not you, you most likely won't need anything past a single thread but just for the sake of getting things done quicker we'll give it two whole cores video ram will clock up to 128 megs enable 3d acceleration as for the storage in the controller ide we want to add our Disk image, you see I have Tumbleweed open SUSE right there, but we're going to choose a disk file. Here's Linux Mint 20.3 Cinnamon, 64-bit ISO image. We'll go ahead and pull that up. And everything is good by the seams. We'll go and just OK that, and we can now start up the virtual machine. full screen mode and as you can see we now have our um, live startup so we have a couple of um, things here we have start Linux Mint start in compatibility mode OEM install for manufacturers we may go over that in a future video integrity check to check the medium we are fine here for me because we're just only um, booting pretty much we're just booting off of my SSD really to be completely honest it, it's just virtualization for me but for you if you feel as if you may not have burned it properly somehow please go ahead and do the integrity check although if you're already here if you're already at the a screen even even similar to this then you should be okay hard detection boot from the local drive and memory test when you're installing this, you will most likely not see the hardware detection and boot from local drive, but we'll go ahead and go about this anyway. We're going to go ahead and start Linux Mint, and let that 
go ahead and just start right up. And the warning in most Linux distros, you're going to get a lot of errors and fails right at the front because Linux doesn't really hide anything from you. And of course, that's the startup sound, which is extremely loud. I don't know why they do that. So, as you see, it's trying to resize a little bit, but it's not going to resize all the way. So, let's go ahead and just for the sake of clarity, let's go to our display settings. And we're going to go ahead and ramp this up to my native 1920. Great. It does not appear to actually have 1920 by 1080. Not that I see. No. So we're going to go ahead and go with. 1900, no, 1600 by 1050 will be good. You know what? No, we'll go ahead and just do uh, 1900 by 1200. Never mind. Um, 1440 by 900. You know what? Yes, we'll just keep this configuration for now. This is again in a virtual machine, so that things can be a lot different in here. But note that on your actual hardware, this will probably sort itself out anyway. So you he see here, unlike in the older OpenSUSE video, you see in here we have a live environment. We can even mess around with this all we want right now. Sorry about that. But we can... Um, Leave anything we want. We can even browse the web from right here, even off a of USB. And even though it's a virtual machine, it is still a little slow because it's really just reading off of the ISO image, which is a little bit harder. It's not mounted into anything besides the um, IDE controller. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and just go to this. You have this little image right here. Install Linux Mint. And as we see, we're on the Cinnamon desktop environment here, but you can go ahead and follow along in Mate or XFCE all you want. Now, I will have a video, well, I won't actually need it. I'll go ahead and be able to just show you. But as for Linux Mint Debian Edition, we will go over that in a future video. Um, if you're trying to follow along with me, you most likely can, but when it comes to things like installing drivers, you're going to have to go see somebody else or wait for my future video. Although if you are going to get into Linux Mint, I do recommend you pick a Ubuntu-based Linux Mint. But if you wish to go for Debian and you want to do it soon, please go look online to somebody else, okay? I know that take, might take a few views away from my channel, but at least the community will do a bit better. And that's what really counts here. That's why I do these type of videos as well, instead of just the Sentinel videos. So as we got here, we have a really good and very simple um, setup installer. And this will generally be a lot faster than anything on Windows. It will take you hours to install Windows and Mac OS. Well, it's Mac OS. So continue. We're on English. English US, correct. We'll go ahead and install our multimedia codecs. And this can take a little bit of time. So I do plan to go over a video of actual Ubuntu, as well as you may have seen if you paid attention, not only was there OpenSUSE, and not only was there um, op um, Linux Mint, but there was also another one, there were two more. There was also Arch Linux, and there was also Ubuntu Live Server. Now that is Ubuntu Server, it does not have a graphical environment, I may go over a video on that, however, it basically sets itself up for you. You just gotta press enter a few times and it's done, really. And when it comes to Arch Linux, I may do a video of that. But as of right now, I for one am still learning Arch Linux. I'm still trying to get Arch Linux to fully work on my system. So I'm not gonna try and teach people about this, because I can't. So it's right here, erase disk and install Linux Mint. If you want to, if you're doing this on hardware and you want to just partition, you can go here to something else and um, do the SDA partitions there. 
but instead we're going to go ahead and just erase and install Linux Mint. So we'll fully erase the disk, continue, it got our time zone correct, New York, and we'll go ahead and call this Mint, type in our super, our super secure password, continue, and there we go. We can also see everything that's going on down there. And it has a little slideshow here. It shows us welcome to Linux Mint. We can browse the web, watch Netflix, um, look at YouTube. There's Spotify and Rhythmbox. Spotify, if you're looking for doing things in proprietary nature in the popular way. Or Rhythmbox, if you prefer better experience, really. Celluloid, MPV, and VC VLC. You have Pix, Drawing App that comes integrated. You also have GIMP and Inkscape you can install. And I may decide to do a tutorial of GIMP because that's why I've been using. You may have noticed my, um, my thumbnails have become actually made in a photo editor, not really a photo editor, a drawing tool of some kind. I'm using GIMP for all that. There's a, a lot of, of stuff here in the slides. It comes with LibreOffice installed automatically, which is really nice. While I, for one, do prefer to have um, something like OnlyOffice installed, you can go and just install that through the package manager. So we'll go ahead and just let this install. And we will be right back when it's done. And right now we are reaching the end of the installation. As you can see, it is unpacking and preparing the uninstallation of the ISO. It will soon unmount the ISO image and we will be ready to go. So feel um, free to completely follow along with everything I do inside the software. And if you're installing this exact distribution or any of the other two, here it goes done now, please follow along very closely. We'll go and just restart now. Now it says please remove the installation medium, then press enter. If you are on a if you're on hardware, I recommend that you would just take out your installation medium, although that is most likely unnecessary. If you're on a virtual machine, you can't, so you just press enter. And that is why we set our boot priority to hard disk. And we're booting. We just waited a few seconds. This is the virtual machine. There we go. We type in our super secure password and cover your ears. I went ahead and just turned down the volume because why not, right? Okay, so first we're gonna go ahead and just go right into display because this thing is not full screen full screening for me. I'll go ahead and keep that. It's not necessarily something that I'm a Not a big fan of a box, but if I can't help it, right? So we have a full setup. You can go ahead and click the part here, show this dialog box in startup. You can go ahead and take that off if you don't want that to show up in startup, like it says. And here you have a whole layout. So it's out with modern. You can set the traditional desktop layout, or you can go with modern. I'll be going with modern. You have system snapshots that you can back up to. Your driver manager, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Your update manager, your system settings, software manager. There are about 60,000 applications available. Linux Mint comes with the bare minimum to get you started. The soft system software is there if you're looking for more. That part of the bare minimum is not true. You also have a firewall setup. So we're gonna go ahead and set up our firewall. Status on, incoming deny, outgoing allow. Now I'm going to generally just walk you through how I set up Linux Mint, okay? Right off the bat, we have our desktop colors. I generally just keep this, okay? Uh, you want to go into your update manager so you can get the latest of everything, including drivers. Because you're not going to be able to access them if, they, if your driver definitions are not updated. 
we type in our super secure password and we give it a second it will be looking through the updates that are available if you wish to you can also turn on a local mirroring for updates although i generally keep this off but you know what we'll go and just turn it on because why not right all right there we go we're going to just install updates it has a lot of things it has the gnu born again shell by nine blue z for bluetooth busy box crypt setup and all that as you can see, I'm wired in, and you should be as well. Even if you're on a laptop, take every chance that you can to be wired in. Unless you have one of those Zoomer laptops that do not, indeed, have a RJ45 port on them. And if you bought one of them, well, first of all, you fucked up. Okay? Simple. But don't feel bad. If you're coming to Linux, you obviously made a lot of mistakes with proprietary software. But again, don't worry, don't worry. And as you can probably see up here in the top right, I'm seeing it on OBS. My, yeah, for some reason, recording with the proprietary NVIDIA driver does that, as you can probably see. And I hope that's just on my screen for the recorder and not actually going to be in the video. But I do not know. And there we go, it just, okay, never mind. Yeah, it does that from time to time. Don't worry about it. It's nothing that's going to get in the way of anything, though. That just happens with the proprietary NVIDIA driver with recording. It, I, I don't like it. it. It sucks. But at least it doesn't happen on actual usage. And thankfully, with NVIDIA open sourcing the drivers, well, the driver kernel modules for the Ampere and the... What's the architecture? The... The Turing architecture, that's right. Hopefully, we can fix these, especially in the x.org version, so we can just start using the community drivers. So, we're going to go ahead and just pause and wait for this all to update. I will show you when it's time to come back. Okay, and as we see, the drivers are starting to, not the drivers, the updates are starting to finish up. So, the Linux kernel generic image is being finished up. We just give it a few seconds. this is almost done after that we will go straight into installing drivers we uh, I actually don't know if we can do that on VirtualBox I don't think there's a VirtualBox 3d acceleration driver if that's the case then I'm just not gonna bother installing Steam although I'll show you where you can get it and might as well not even bother with discord either but I'll show you where you can get that as well all we're going to do is set up the office utility and a few other things. Reboot required, so we'll go ahead and just reboot, restart the system. And then we just let it boot back up. And that'll be it. Type in our super secure password. You probably didn't even hear that this time. I'm not sure if you did, but yeah. So now that's done, we go to our driver manager. Now it's really simple. You can just type in driver here and you'll get it. As for me in a virtual virtual machine, I most likely don't actually have any drivers to install. But if there are any, nope. No additional drivers. So, things updated. Got the firewall up. You can um, look at the documentation, release notes, etc. IRC chat room and everything. Okay, so that's it. Let's go over the uh, bloats. So right off the bat, we have this um, very bold but bland um, layout. Not really layout, but like icon imaging. But we can also change that. We're going to go ahead and remove the show desktop icon because it's pretty useless. It comes with Firefox install, which is okay, but it comes with a lot of unnecessary stuff. And unlike the... Um, 
installation of OpenSUSE obviously has a dedicated file manager, as it should. Yes, we're doing things now. And of course, the terminal it uses is right here, and it's not glaring. Also, this has much, much better controls. So right off the bat, we're going to go ahead and get some stuff up and running, okay? Just for right now, then we'll go back to the blow up. But I do want to show you a few things. So, NeoFetch is pre-installed. HTOP is not, though. And all of our stuff is showing up, so we'll go ahead and clear. Uh, you can go ahead and just type sudo if you want, and then everything else. But we're going to go ahead and just sudo.s so we don't have to type sudo anymore. Go ahead and just clear. And now, once you apt, instead of Zypher, like the original one, the uh, SUSE, this uses the apt package manager apt. And that's about it. It uses uh, debs, or at least in this case, it uses debs, app images, and also flat packs. Now, debs are like RPMs, but they're for Debian based distributions, like Debian branches off into Ubuntu, and Linux Mint is Ubuntu based, and also Debian based. But we're going to go ahead and oh, sorry there, just install HTOP. Let that install. Good, we have normal top, of course, but we don't want to run that. So we just want to run HTOP. And there we go. So there you go. You can press F2 and zip everything all you want. As for us, though, we're going to go just Q, clear, exit, exit. There we go. So we've also got um, a couple things installed here. We have a calendar and library manager, that's okay. We have a thing called hex chat, which is where you can actually talk to people online, get like Linux Mint support and stuff. We have Thunderbird Mail for email, which who really uses email in their OS? Not a lot of people, but it's okay. Web apps, which is where you can actually use, you can actually um, run websites as if they're applications. And we've also got transmission, which is for a, which is a BitTorrent client. The Firefox installed here is not always all that great, depending on your system. We got document scanner and everything, which is pretty nice. It has a Hypnotics TV player, which you can actually watch for free TV. You have Celluloid as your music and video player. Rhythmbox is also another music player. We have everything we need installed here. But there's also things like, for example, if I can bring it up right here, we have things such as. Well, you have extensions right here, which is where you can install all of the Cinnamon extensions that you wish to have on your desktop, like Gtile, which is where you can set up your desktop environment almost as if it's a tiling. Well, this is essentially a GNOME tiling window manager and get right down to it, but not entirely, but just about. Transparent panels, which is essentially where, well, you get transparent panels like this, and also this. Watermarks on your desktop, who the fuck wants that? You've got a lot of good stuff here. And a lot of bad stuff, but you've got a lot of good stuff as well. This comes with PIX installed, which is for organizing. It's essentially just another file manager, but just for pictures. And you've also got a drawing application, which is pretty useless compared to something else that we will be replacing this with. Now it's really similar, but it's not the same. So we're going to go ahead and just close this. We're going to go into our software manager. We're going to type ink, and that should be enough for us to get... Oh, I need to show you guys first. This is what we have right here. There's a lot of good stuff here, right? It's very well organized. And as you're fixing to find out, it is a lot better than the one that opens SUSE. Here we go. We have the we have the Debian version, which you can tell what kind of um, application it is by looking at the version, the package and size. 
This is the Ubuntu version. I am wanting to install the flat pack though, because I do not support the idea of Debian of Deb packages because that just all that does is lock out an application from running on a specific operating system. That's all it actually does. It's completely useless. Completely. Just use app images as much as you can. If you can't, use flat packs. Simple as that. There are also snaps, but snaps are only good for servers. So that's it. Which is one of the reasons of why I discourage new, new users from using the base Ubuntu because of that. While Inkscape is set and getting installed, we're going to go ahead and install a few other things. We're going to grab what's called GIMP. And no, I'm not talking about LaTeX. I'm talking about the GNU Image Manipulation Program. This is the app image. There's also, um, as you can see, um, the flat pack. We'll go ahead and just install the flat pack, though, just to be safe. And you'll be able to see them here very soon. So another thing I also like to do, you have your Linux Mint logo right here, but you can also configure that. Something that I like to do is replace it, and this is entirely up to you, of course, but I like to, to replace it with... Sorry, my neighborhood is full of shitheads. I like to replace it with the Cinnamon Symbolic logo, and there you go. Perfect. Yeah, that, that's literally all I really do for that. But another thing I also do is something you'll want. Since you can't really pull anything around. Something I want to do is customize. Okay, we're going to set auto arrange off. Go to the full desktop settings. I'll go ahead and put all this on because I usually do. Show icons for missing monitors. I usually just turn that off. And if you want to choose desktop icons off, you can go ahead. But I use this just to categorize and make sure that everything is showing up properly. But you don't need any of them off if you don't want to. And then when it comes to... There you go. It is not auto-arranged, so you can place them around as you wish. Now, something else, which is about this, about these, uh, the way that everything is designed. You might not like it. You can change that. So, everything is done installing. We're going to also go ahead and install Blender. Let that open. when it finally finds the repository. You know what? We don't need this. We're okay without Blender. I usually install Blender though. As you see, we've got GIMP installed. This VM is awfully slow, but my main system is, of course, faster. Here you go. You've got GIMP. You can go design all you want. Oh, right. So another thing is right in, in your system settings, you may want to customize a few things. So like your background, you can change that. As you may have seen from the top jittering, if it shows up here. I don't think it is. Is it not showing up? Perhaps not. Oh, I usually have Sheffield, but there's also another one that I do enjoy, which is a basic Linux Mint, and it's that one. This one right here. I like the reflection. We'll go ahead and use this since it's easier on the eyes. We're going to want to go into themes. You see these icons? Usually I set them to high contrast, which I for one find to be a bit 
better. It's just generally better in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. You may not like that. And of course, here's the thing about Linux. You don't have to like something, but if you don't like it, you can happily change it. Unlike in Windows, something happens, well, you're shit out of fucking luck. Simple as that. You have no choice in the matter. But here, you do. Another thing I also um, like to set up is, of course, if we can, empty the panel. We find Firefox, we go and keep that. We may need it for specific applications, for specific use cases. But we're also going to go ahead and install LibreWolf. LibreWolf is a Firefox based browser that is completely set up for security security and privacy as well as performance and and this is of course the flat pack it, it's distributed in a flat pack which is really really nice so we go ahead and let that install and for the time being we're going to do some other things so you may be wondering well okay so we can run Linux applications, which I find a lot of people saying they don't go to Linux simply because they can't run EXEs. Well, there's a solution. We're gonna go ahead and just sudo s. I find it a bit quicker to install this be this way because everything is clear and concise. Just apt install uh, isnal wine. We'll go ahead and just install Wine, which means Wine is not an emulator, which is a recurring acronym. It is a translator. It's seen in the um, Steam Proton API. It translates Windows protocols into Linux protocols, essentially. And then you've also got it translating OpenGL back into OpenGL. It doesn't really translate it. It just runs it straight through. It runs Vulkan straight through. And DirectX used to be translated into OpenGL. Now it's translated into Vulkan. Depending which version of OpenG uh, I mean of, of DirectX that it is. So keep that in mind. But this generally does result in better performance, although pretty much all of the games that are so old that you're actually going to be questioning whether or not they will run or not under Linux, you're probably still going to get better performance even when it's translated from DirectX to OpenGL. So this is installing, and we'll go ahead and be right back when it is done. And we're back now that that is done, we're going to clear and then apt install q4wine which is what we'll be using in order to run wine based applications inside of linux that is our front end for wine and it's done it's really lightweight we'll close this terminal librewolf is done installing now i'm going to go ahead and set up librewolf on the panel we'll add it over here here it is, LibreWolf. There you go. So that's all done. This is generally everything that I do. But just to make sure that everything is full, fully up and running, we're going to go ahead and check something. And I will be doing a video on how to use Q4 Wine in the future. I'll most likely be using this virtual machine for it. So we're going to go ahead and free Doom just to make sure everything is working. Phase one, we will install that. There we go. But we're also going to install another game called Nexias. Yeah, it was this one, which is the Alright. 
you know what? No, we're not going to bother with this because you can just go ahead and download yourself. It's a really good quick style arena shooter. So we have phase one installed. We're going to go ahead and just type, press no for GC to do feedback, but you can go and press yes if you want. Here we go. Oh, would you look at that? That's running in GZ Doom. So we're gonna need to first open GL 3.3. So we're gonna go ahead and start install PR Boom Plus, and that will be able to run it. It's a source port that requires very little from the system. It of course it has a low a very um oh there we go i see pr boot plus just came with phase one so we're gonna go ahead and uninstall the flat pack phase one that we had and it's what it looks like when you're uninstalling a flat pack there we go phase one it is For, okay, nope, it's being picked up. There we go. Alright. And of course, you've seen how this set up PR Boom Plus, so we're just going to go ahead. And in the virtual machine, my mouse is not actually working. Like always, I mean, it has to do that, right? And of course, my error key sensitivity is horrible but that can be rearranged this is going smoothly for the most part that crossover there we go as you see it was working now of course when it comes to the drivers that was a big issue at first I forgot the, there we go. I typed them the wrong way when you open this up, you will see something that says recommended, and your drivers will see one that says open source. So I recommend just choosing your recommended one, ironically, but pick whichever one you want, really. But again, I recommend the recommended one. We're going to also go ahead and install, well, I'm not going to go ahead and install it, but if you know how to use Microsoft Office and you want Microsoft Office compatibility, right here, only Office is what you want. So, yes. You also have a thing right here for system reports. It will let you know if you have crash reports. It will let you know about updates and everything. So, yeah. That's generally all I have to say for this system. Linux Mint. If you are a beginner, this is the OS that I highly recommend that you try out. So, thank you for watching. And have a good rest of your day.